I really want to set these projects in a broader context. What we really want to do is have the students experience a modernised and innovative campus. And these two proposals are part of a much larger proposal that tries to do that. We are one of three public research institutions students expect to be able to do undergraduate research. These proposals will allow us to meet that expectation better than we are right now. One of them is to do with a new lab. We have Biology 210 and 11, which some of you may have done before. Staffing is fine with those, but what we can't do is enroll everybody in them because both need a lab and we only have two labs and we want a third lab. So the idea is to get Hubbard 304 and 307 and convert that into three labs and bring them state of the art. One of the things that we hear a lot from the students is they can't get that class because they can't get that lab because they don't want to do it at night time. And it's our students work and they have family commitments. So it's a big one, has a big impact. It's not just biology students, it's pre-med students, biomedical engineering students in a different college from mine, um, and the pre-professional students also require these courses. It's got a big gen ed component too. Second project, uh, for many years we wanted to re design and renovate our psychology clinic. Psychology is one of the strongest departments in the university, has a lot of students, and the clinic itself is crucial to shadowing and undergraduate research, but it's way, way out of date. It also has a very important interface to the community. So we think that very impactful would be a renovation of the clinic. It will also help keep psychology accredited. Hi, I'm Andrew Hipsley. I am the Dean of Fairmont College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Thank you for being here to listen to me. Let me jump straight in by talking about these proposals from Fairmont College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Introductory biology is a really big deal at Wichita State. It's part of general education and it serves multiple degree programs, both within my college and in other colleges. Now there are two courses, Bio 210 and Bio 211, which are particularly important because they have an associated lab. Degree programs requiring 210 and 211 include biology, biochemistry, forensic sciences, and the pre-med track. But outside the college, we have in the College of Health Professions, the BS in Medical Laboratory Science, and any student who is pre-med or pre-physical assistant. And it's an option for the BS in Health Science. Then there, these labs are required in the engineering college through the biomedical engineering degree. And I've done the calculation, I've done some numbers, and I've calculated between one and 2,000 students actually need this course. Then there's a whole lot of students in addition to that who are doing gen ed uh, and an LAS lab requirement. But here's the big problem. Unfortunately, we just don't have the lab capacity to match the demand for these courses. And this has been a real problem for students over recent years because the numbers enrolling in those degree programs have surged. And as you can imagine, there has been a lot of expressions of concern from students and mostly heard when they're trying to enroll and they cannot enroll and the class quickly reaches capacity. Now we do have alternative non-standard times for these labs, but many of the students work or have family comm commitments and they really can't do a lab late at night. The other thing is when periodically our programs do what's called a self-study, we look at our program and we invite students to discuss with us what they see as a weakness in the program. And students have recently said that the state of the art of the labs associated with 2 and 10 and 211 are woeful. Some students are exploring biologically based degree programs and their taste of biology is in those labs and I think it's probably very off-putting. You saw in the video what those labs look like. The major consequence is a serious impediment to degree completion. So what's the plan? The plan is to convert the current labs in Hubbard 3, 4 and 3, 7 into three labs and bring all three 
to state of the art. That's the first project. The second project. This has been many years in the asking. We have a very strong psychology department. It hosts a very popular undergraduate degree, about 500 majors, as well as three doctoral degrees. It also has an extremely important presence in the city of Wichita through its psychology clinic. However, the clinic is in dire need of renovation. It's way past its sell-by date. This proposal is a complete redesign and recreation of a new clinic that will help keep community psychology accredited and be a much more effective interface with the Wichita community. Crucially though, it's gonna offer far more shadowing opportunities for our students and me, really importantly, it's going to provide for more undergraduate research opportunities. And that's got a potential not just to impact psychology students, but many students have interest in psychology outside of the degree. Now, of course, we understand that implementing these impactful changes costs, comes at a cost. And you know what the deal is. It's $6 per credit hour to levy the, the costs to match this. But these, all of these projects are time-wise fairly straightforward projects. So many of the students who are right with us now will actually see the changes take place before their eyes. And those who are graduating soon, they may well be drawn into graduate degree programs that we host where these projects are going to have an impact and they will therefore see the benefits themselves. It also has to be remembered that these two projects I'm talking about are part of a much larger proposal which is intended to benefit as many students as possible. It's got to be seen in this broader context. We want all students, all students to experience a modernized, innovative campus and this plan is part of that. You know, we are, only, we are one of only three research-focused higher education institutes in the state. And you know what that means? It means that we are expected to provide undergraduate research opportunities to our students. These two proposals, but I would say all the proposals that are being offered, help let the university meet this undergraduate research expectation. A big piece of the referendum and the infrastructure proposals is a new business school building. But I do want to make the point that the business school building itself as a project is not just for the benefit of a single subpopulation of the university student body. For one thing, it will mean that business will move out of Clinton Hall and Clinton Hall will be repurposed. And it will be repurposed as a student center, which will benefit all students, and it will be right in the heart of campus. The business school itself will, be, will have cutting edge classrooms, a 300 seat auditorium, study rooms, computer labs, and a place to have coffee and sit around. But I want to emphasize that this is going to be for all the students to make use of, not just the business students. It also will be a benefit to all. Let me end by telling you about some of our students who are helping us think through this whole process. I am fortunate I have my own advisory council this is a body of keen students who advise me on student issues and meet with me every month. Two of these students I asked to represent the college on the Shock the Future Committee. This is the, community, the committee that's leading the process of the referendum. Uh, Tyson Gentry, she's at the top right corner, and Kathy Johnson, who's in the middle on the left. 
These two students, with the rest of the college advisory group, are hosting a student-led town hall this afternoon at 3 p.m. in 211 Hubbard Hall. So I would like to invite everybody, all students of LAS, but all students of the whole campus, and all faculty and all staff to come along, ask questions of Tyson and Kathy, ask questions of me. I will be there. The chairs of biology and psychology will be there. And we will have a guest appearance by the Associate Dean of Business and Terry Hall, who's the Vice President of Student Affairs.